All right, in this video, we're going to be covering chapter four, variability. Before we get started with chapter four, a brief review of chapter three in the previous video. We talked about types of central tendency. Tend central tendency was one way to summarize the sample data. Uh, it's one type of descriptive statistics. And there were three types of central tendency we talked about, mode, median, and mean. Mode is a score with the highest frequency and in the graph that would be shown as the highest point in the graph. Median is a score at the 50th percentile. It's a physical geographical, uh, geographical middle point of the, all the raw scores if they were to be lined up in, uh, in a line, small, smallest to the biggest. The mean is the mathematical center because it sums up all the raw scores. It doesn't ignore any score. And we divide that by the total number of the participants. And that is why mean is the mathematical center and it's the superior form of central tendency, superior form of summarizing, the, summarizing data compared to mode and median. But mean is most accurate only when um, the scores are ratio and interval and they're normally distributed. And we also talked about how you can compare the sizes of this mode, median, and mean to determine the shape of the distribution. The normal distribution has all mode, median, um, mode, median, mean all in the uh, all at the center in the same location. But if it's negatively or positively, or positively or negatively skewed the location of the three central tendency changes. So make sure you review that. And we also talked about deviations around the mean. You find out the distance your raw score is from the mean by subtracting the two. And by either looking at the numbers or the signs, you can determine um, its location. So if your deviation score is two, we know that you're two away from the mean and you are also two larger, two bigger than the mean. Whereas if your deviation score is negative two, negative sign tells you that it, your score was smaller than the mean and the distance is still the same from the mean but on the other direction. If you add all the deviation scores, all the distance of each raw scores and you add them all up, you sum them all up, they're always equal to zero. And also population mean is noted with mu, Greek letter mu. And when your sample is super close to population, population might be the same as your sample mean. Now we're moving on to the measures of variability. Okay. Member central tendency provides us with the center point where most of these scores tend to be located, you see that if you were to think that all this one, each blue dot is, um, represents each person lining up, so all these people are the one who scored 30 and 31 and so on. And you can see the, there are much more people around the center point towards the mean compared to people towards either end. And that's why central tendency is useful in summarizing the data because it represents most of the people, people's scores. And now we use variability to indicate how much the scores differ from each other and how accurately the mean represents the scores and how much the distribution is spread out. So central tendency is just one score that summarizes all the data but now we want to look at, so how accurate is this one score that's summarizing everyone's scores? And we determine that by calculating the variability. And once we have both variability and central tendency, that is the complete set of descriptive statistics. Now we have a complete picture of the data. Now we can really describe our sample data with these two numbers. Oops. So again, variability tells us how scores are different from one another. So let's compare these three examples. In sample A, 
in sample B and C, all, in all samples, the mean is same, six. So supposedly, this six should be representative of everyone's scores. It's summarizing the sample data. But if you look at the sample data, they look a little different, despite all of these having the sample uh, same mean, okay? So sample A scores ranges from zero all the way to 12. So it looks like everyone else's scores other than the one in the mean are actually quite far from the mean. Sample C on the other hand, actually everyone scored the same score and they are all at the mean. So they're super close to the mean because they are the mean. Sample B is somewhere in the middle. People, scores range from four to eight. So scores are actually closer to the mean than sample A, but it's still far, farther than sample C. So you can see that mean does not give us the entire picture of your sample statistics. And we need to know the variability. We need to know, so how far are all the scores from the mean to determine whether the mean is an accurate picture of the entire data set? So you can imagine that the, the mean in sample C is much accurate, much more accurate description of the entire data set because rest of the data is also six compared to it is for sample A. Just by, if you just summarize the entire data of sample A by saying, okay, everyone scored around six, that would not give us entirely accurate picture of the data. Okay. And variability also tells us how, so how accurate is the mean? When you have small variability, like we did in sample C, the scores are more consistent. This one is extremely consistent. And thus the mean tends to be more accurate. And there are less distance between the mean. So they are all close to each other. So if there are small variability, there, that means variability means changing, right? So if there's small, small amount of changing, that means scores are consistent. If they're consistent, that means there are more but they are closer to the mean. And thus, if they're closer to the mean, central tendency is an accurate picture of the data. But if you have larger variability, that means scores are all over each other. And scores are, that means scores are not so consistent, they're inconsistent. And that also means their scores are farther away from each other and from the mean. So mean is not so accurate uh, representation of the uh, of the data, okay? So you need both mean and variability to paint the entire picture of the data. And by looking at the size of the uh, variability, you can determine how much the distribution is spread out. And sometimes the variability is also called dispersion because it's how, how wide or narrow the scores are dispersed, okay? So you can see the distribution A in this example, it has very narrow distribution, uh, dispersion. All the scores are kind of um, coming, to get, coming together towards the mean, towards the center point. So that means the variability is small. Distribution C on the other hand, so you can see that the dispersion is super wide. So scores are farther away from the mean and farther away from each other. All the scores are spread out all across all of these scores. Then you will have greater variability, larger variability score. There are three measures of variability, range, variance, and standard deviation. And we're gonna cover these three in this lecture. Range is pretty simple. It's just simply taking the highest score and the lowest score in your data set and subtracting the two. And that is the, that's, that's the range. Remember, we talked about how variable, variable is a continuum and all the scores fall in, in the variable, in the continuum. And if you have someone's score and another person's score, and if you subtract these two scores, that's the distance, okay? So again, in the range, you take the highest score and then you take the lowest score and you subtract these two 
and that's the distance between the highest and lowest. Okay. So it involves two extreme, two most extreme scores. And you, again, in this example with the raw scores, you find the highest score, this is 54. You take the lowest score, which was 24, and you subtract the two, and then you can say range is 30. So going back to the previous example, uh, let's see if the, the number range confirms what we expected the, the variability to be for each sample. So sample A, the score seemed to be farther away from the mean. So the highest score was 12, the smallest was zero, the subtracting the two gives us the range of 12. Sample B, the highest to lowest A to four, the distance is four, and finally, sample C, all the scores were the same, so highest and lowest is the same, so zero was the distance. So you can see that widely spread out sample gives us the largest variability, largest range, whereas the small variability is for the scores that are really close to the mean. So that's one function of variability to, to tell us how wide or narrow the scores are how closely it resembles the mean, so how accurate is the mean in representing the data. Range is usually used for nominal or ordinal scores. Um, and you, for the ordinal, you just you, you do what I just did, take the highest rank and the lowest rank, and you calculate the distance. And for the nominal, it's a little bit different. You count the number of categories being examined. Okay, so if my variable, uh, variable is gender, gender is nominal, and you count number of categories options that people said. Maybe you had male, female, others, um, and that would be, your range would be three. And now we move on to variance and standard deviation. You use variance and standard deviation as your variability measures when you have normally distributed interval or ratio scores. This sounds familiar, right? Remember which type of central tendency you report when you have interval or ratio scores that are normally distributed? That was mean. So whenever you have normally distributed interval or ratio scores, that means you always report mean as central tendency and variance and standard deviation or variability, okay? So vari variance and standard deviation will tell us how much the scores differ from the mean. So in the most simplest term, the concept of variance and standard deviation is average distance from the mean. So remember, variability is how far is everyone else's score from the mean. So you calculate everyone's score's distance from the mean, and you take the average of all the distances to know, on average, how far is everyone's scores from, what, uh, from the mean, okay? So imagine you want to do that by taking, taking the mean, because uh, average distance is average calculating the mean of the distances. So remember, this is how you calculate the distance. And again, this with a summation sign. Let me write that better. Summation sign is a mean equation for calculating the average. But except for when we're calculating the average distance, this raw score is actually the entire distance, okay? So this x is replaced by this entire equation because all of our raw scores that we're trying to calculate the mean of is the distance scores. So here you can see that in the place of raw score, we have the entire distance scores. You sum all the distance scores and you take the average, and now we can find the average devi deviation. On average, how far were all the scores from the mean? And that's variability. But we run into a problem when we try to calculate the average distance. Why? Remember, 
the sum of all the deviation scores from the mean is zero. We talked about how normal distribution is symmetrical. So if we calculate the distance from the mean for each raw score, they all end up canceling out, so it equal to zero. So when we try to calculate the average distance, this becomes zero. But in fact, we know that the distance, average distance is not zero, right? So this is the example of how we did it. So let's say this is the raw scores and we want to calculate the variability. We want to see how far is each of these score from the mean on average, okay? And we have the mean, 14, 14, and we take the de deviation score. You subtract mean from each of the raw score. Subtract, 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 and now you have deviation scores. Again, brief reminder, by looking at the number, you determine how far is each scores from the mean. And by looking at the sign, we know where it's located. So even when we, we don't know, let's say we don't know what the raw scores are. We only know the deviation score. Without knowing the raw scores, just by looking at this deviation score, we can determine where each of the raw scores is located. Okay, so let's say it's the normal distribution because we are reporting mean, and the center point is mean, 14. D score, this deviation score, it's negative two. Negative sign tells us it's on the left side of the mean because it's smaller than the mean, and it's distance two away from the mean. Okay, so that was 12. This raw score on the, this distance score on the other hand says positive two. Positive means that this raw score, whatever that is, was on the right side of the mean because it's greater than mean. And the distance is actually the same. It's same two away from the mean, which was 16. Okay. So even, even, if, even if you don't know this raw sco scores, just by looking at the deviation scores, you can determine where it's located relative to the mean. All right, going back to the deviation score. So let's say you calculate all, all the deviation scores for each raw scores, and you, now you want to calculate the average deviation, average distance. So you sum this all up and divide it by the part, number of participants. But if you sum all, all of this up, you see how this all cancels out? So your average deviation becomes zero. As a solution to that, the concept of square deviation came about. Since adding this all up gives us zero, we square each of the deviation, that's called squared deviation, so that can, we can get rid of this signs. So when we add all of these all up, it's no longer zero. So again, you take the deviation score of each raw score, and then you square each deviation into square deviation. Negative two squared is four, negative one squared is one, two squared is four, and so on. And now if you add up all of them, it's no longer zero. So you can actually calculate the average now, but it's not average deviation, it's average of the square deviation. It's the average of these values, okay? So now we have average of the squared distance, not just distance, squared distance. And that is the concept of variance. Variance is the average of the squared deviation. Remember this formula right in the middle in the parenthesis, x minus uh, x bar, that's the deviation score, raw score minus the mean. That's the distance from the mean of each raw score. But we squared them, we squared them, see, you square them above right here because we didn't want all the sum of the deviation scores to be zero. So we square them 
And then once we have squared them, we added it all up because that's the formula for calculating the mean. You add all the raw scores up. And then we divide that by n, the no total number of participants. So now this is the average of square deviation. And we call that with this symbol, large capital S square x, and that is variance. Variance, again, is the measure of variability. So larger the variance, larger the variability, scores are more spread out. But remember, this, the, this variance is still in the squared unit because we have to square all distances. So we square root it to go back to the original distance unit. So we square root the entire thing again, and that is standard deviation. And that is a true distance, average amount of the scores um, deviate from the mean. How far is each score from the mean as an average distance? So squared distance is variance, and average distance is standard deviation. So on the other, in other words, if you square, if you square root the variance, that's standard deviation. And if you square the variance, uh, sorry, square the standard deviation, that's your variance. So they are inevitably, inevitably related to each other. If you see squared sign like this, this is variance. If you see any, if you don't see any squared sign, that's standard deviation. So both standard deviation and variance tell us how spread out the distribution is and how accurate the mean summarizes the score. If the standard deviation is large, the variability is large, that means on average, scores are farther away from the mean. So the distribution is wider. If the standard deviation is small, on average, score, scores are close, closer to the mean, so you see a narrower distribution because they're all clumping towards the mean. So again, the mean is the exact point where the distribution is located, center point, and standard deviation quantifies the amount around the mean. So how many scores are around the mean? Are they closer to the mean or are they farther away from the mean? And one thing you need to know is that in any normal distribution, one standard deviation below and above, below and above the mean includes 68% of the distribution. So any data set, if it's normally distributed, 68% of the people's scores are one standard deviation below and above the mean. Okay. So again, smaller the standard deviation, all the scores are on average closer to the mean, so you see narrower distribution. So that's distribution A. All the scores are close to the mean. Greater the standard deviation greater the variability, scores are farther away from the, each other. So all the scores are spread out more, so you see larger dispersion. So summing all up, the shape of the data, remember frequency distribution graph, you see you can determine whether the scores are normally distributed, positively or negatively skewed, or bimodal. The shape tells you the type of distribution that you have, and the mean tells you the center point of the data. So typically, where is people's score located in one number? And then finally, standard deviation, the variability tells you, okay, so how wide or narrow your distribution is. So from the shape, you know it's normal distribution or not, and then standard deviation tell you, okay, so that normal distribution, is it narrow or wide? So that's the information you get from the sample data to describe that data you have. Just like we learned that sample, their sample mean and population mean, and the closer the sample resembles the population, sample mean get, becomes close to 
population mean. And so there is also population variance and standard deviation. The true population variance now has this deviation score as population mean instead of the sample mean because we're calculating the population variance. And if you square root the entire population variance, that's your population standard deviation. These two formula are exactly the same as the ones we saw for sample population, a uh, sample variance and sample standard deviation, except now you're, we are using population mean instead of the sample mean. But we don't always get to calculate the population variance and standard deviation because we don't know population mean. We don't know how wide or narrow the distribution is in real population. When that's the case, which usually is the case, we use variability in the sample. We use sample variance and standard deviation to estimate population variance and standard deviation. We use what we have in the sample to estimate what it is in the population. Remember that process of we take the sample and we infer to population. And this process is called infer. That's essentially the process, okay? And the problem is that when we're trying to use this sample variance and sample standard deviation to estimate the population, they are biased estimators. They don't give us an accurate estimation of population variance and standard deviation because they tend to underestimate the true parameters, true population parameters. So as a solution to that, we have unbiased estimator of the population variance and standard deviation, and we call that estimated population variance. This estimated population variance and standard deviation are unbiased estimators, and the only difference of these are from the original sample population and uh, sample variance and standard deviation is that now you divide the square sum of square distance with n minus one. And this sub, uh, dividing the num uh, numerator with n minus one instead of n helps you to correct that bias and get closer to estimating the true population variance and standard deviation. Just briefly reflecting back on what we learned about two different types of statistic. Remember descriptive statistics is to use to organize and summarize the sample data. Whereas inferential statistics is when we're trying to make inferences from the sample to the population. So this estimated population variance and standard deviation are inferential versions of descriptive statistics. These are what we expect the population variance and standard deviation to be based off of what we found in the sample. We found the sample data, we found sample variance and sample standard deviation, and we use those sample um, statistics to make inference to find what we expect the population variance and standard deviation to be. They're not true population variance and standard deviation because we didn't collect data from the entire population, but an estimation, inferential estimation. So as a summary, when we are trying to describe variability, there are descriptive measures and there are inferential measures. If we have the, if we had sample, we use to, the, uh, the denominator have N at the bottom, to either calculate the sample variance and sample standard deviation. They have large capital S as a symbol. If we're calculating the variance and standard deviation for the entire population data, then we have population variance and population standard deviation, known as sigmas. But we don't always get to calculate this. So instead of using these sample the sample variance and sample standard deviation as the population variance and standard deviation, they are biased. They are not accurate representation. So instead, we use the division 
with n minus one, we have num numerator, a uh, denominator as n minus one, and we use this estimate population variance and an estimate population standard deviation with smaller um, letter s to replace this population variance and standard deviation when we don't have them. Okay, so anytime you calculate the variance and standard deviation on SPSS with real statistics tool, they will always calculate these variance and standard deviation to represent the population estimators that we don't know. So again, for variance, large capital S describes the sample, but they're biased. So we use this estimated population variance, small s, um, as a population estimate population variance. But if we do know the entire population variance, that's with the Greek letter um, sigma. So again, Greek letters tell us that they are about the population. The English letters tell us that they are about the sample. And just the, the small s's tell us the estimated version of the population. So make sure you can dif uh, differentiate these. All right, let's quickly go through an example. Let's say we have raw data right here, and you would you assuming assuming it is normally distributed, you would calculate the mean by summing all of these all up. Remember the formula for mean is summing all of the x up divided by n, and let's say it was 14. Okay, if if I ask um, in, in this case, mode doesn't make sense because everything is only occurring once. The median would be, let's line them all up, 9, 11, 12, um, 17, and 21. Looks like median would be 12. And range is the highest score, which was 21, and the lowest score, 9. So that gives us the range of 12. If we were to calculate the sample variance and standard deviation, this is the formula. So usually you can calculate the sample variance and then you just square root the variance that you calculated to get the sample standard deviation instead of doing this both procedures all uh, twice in a row. This is how to calculate the variability. Again, this is set of the raw scores. You have the mean when you subtract the mean from the raw score, you get the deviation score. This is all the distance of each raw score is from the mean, whether it's on the left side or on the right side. And then you square these deviation scores to have the square deviation. You add it all up, and that's your sum of at squared deviation. That's your numerator for the variance equation. And then you put that number into the numerator right here, 96, n was 5, and that's your variance. If you square root the entire variance, you get standard deviation. That's your sample variance and sample standard deviation. But what if we want to use the sample to estimate population? We don't know what real population variance and standard deviation is, but we want to use the sample data to estimate the population. If that's the case, we change the formula so that our numerators now, uh, now our denominators have n minus one instead of n because n minus one helps us to correct the bias. Okay, so now instead of dividing that by uh, five, we divide the sum of square deviation with four, and now this is estimated population variance, and this is estimated population standard deviation, and they are small. S's. And finally, um, in research papers, especially when you go on to take 302 and 491, you will be writing research papers. In research publication, you write sample mean, which we wrote it as bar of x with, oh, not mu, but with m. And standard estimated population standard deviation, remember it's small s, of x is standard deviation. 
All right. So that's all I have for chapter four. Let me know if you have any questions, feel free to join um, my virtual office hour or TA's office, office hours throughout the week, or we can schedule a time to meet virtually. All right, good luck.